Hi, and welcome back to Biblical Theology, Exegesis, and Hermeneutics, where meaning is always context-driven. I'm your host, John Strazizic, and today we'll be continuing on in uh, our study in the book of Hebrews. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open up to chapter 12. Okay, and coming here to um, this particular slide, uh, we'll be looking here at how um, Dr. Lane understands uh, this unit within the uh, the, the, the greater uh, macro unit. Um, it is preferable, however, to recognize that the absence of clear literary indices, the limits of a section, must be determined thematically. Uh, the thematic concern with the necessity of steadfast endurance identifies 12, 1 to 13 as an integrated unit of thought. Paranetic instruction does extend beyond 12, 13, but it no longer has any direct bearing upon the theme of enduring corrective suffering. Now that is, this is very key, and and this is why <clears throat> I think that, that uh, Dr. Lane's uh, literary analysis of this unit and, and where it fits in uh, with the previous unit is spot on. Uh, the inferential conjunction dia, um, therefore, in verse 12, indicates that the response demanded by the preceding argument is provided in verses 12 to 13, furnishing an appropriate conclusion to that section. In 12, 14 to 29, the appeal is broader in scope than the exhortation that preceded it. The focus shifts from the response of the community as it experiences suffering to the peril of rejecting the God who continues to speak to the church through his son and through the scriptures. A basis for sensitivity to this peril is provided in the initial paragraph 12, 14 to 17, which makes explicit the responsibility of the community for any of their number prone to apostasy. These concerns were not expressed in 12, 1 to 13, but they are determinative for the development of 12, 14 to 29. And that's exactly where he hits this. Uh, uh, this nail on the head and um, <clears throat> and that's uh, very good reasoning for including uh, ma making a a, uh, a separation here at at verse 14 and grouping it with what follows rather than what preceded so he 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 determined everything it was done by by uh, the thematic content of of the Paranesis, um, and, and that it differed from the, the thematic content of the previous Paranesis, which had to deal with divine discipline. Now, th th this is, is, is um, focusing more on uh, uh, warnings uh, and apostasy. Um, so, and, and I think that's, that is very determinative, uh, as he says down here, um, and uh, and, and we're sticking with this. Okay, now coming to this particular slide, um, as we typically always do, we start off here with a uh, translation of the text and then we'll offer some type of structural analysis. Uh, so we will um, act accordingly. Okay, pursue peace with all men and sanctification, apart from which no one shall see the Lord. By overseeing, lest a certain one come up short from the grace of God, lest a certain root of bitterness crowds in by springing up, and through it defiles many, lest there be a certain fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for a meal sold the rights of his own birthright. For you know that even afterward he was rejected, 
desiring to inherit the blessing. For um, he did not find a place of repentance, although he sought it out with tears. Okay, so that's our translation. And um, so coming here to this this unit, it, it pretty much it divides itself down real simply into you know three points. But but somewhat let's let's step back a little bit and get a little bit a bigger picture of where we're at. We're in the epilogue here um, that started in chapter eleven with the uh, catalog of the exemplars of faith. And then last week, we, uh, the last couple of weeks, we, we were in this hortatory perinesis for the call to run life's race with endurance. And so we've been looking at that here um, the last couple of weeks in chapter 12, verses 1 to 13. So now we're coming here to 14 to 17, but it's a part of a, of a larger unit that, that uh, takes up the, 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 the contents of the rest of the chapter and this comes underneath the heading the final warning against apostasy refusing the one who speaks uh, from heaven Um, and and so it begins here with this our unit for today which is the initial communal paranesis of pursuing peace avoiding apostasy and uh, uh, and, and, it, and, and it explains this by, by Esau's negative example in verses 14 to 17. Uh, so it begins here with, with basically, you know, two commands, you know, for communal living, pursuing peace and holiness. And then through this um, adverbial uh, participle of means, uh, it, it, there, there's, there's a call here for, the, for community oversight, uh, to prevent apostasy in verses 15 to 16. Uh, so this is very tight. So you got, you know, the, you know, verse 14, there's two commands, uh, verses 15 to 16. Then there are these, these three, uh, calls here, um, for, uh, community, community oversight by all of the congregation, not just by the leadership, but by every member, um, and in in the form of these uh, three uh, negative purpose statements, you know that begin with metis, lest there be a certain one who falls short of God's grace, lest there be a certain root of bitterness festering, uh, and lest there be a certain fornicator or profane person as Esau. And then it has these two final basis statements here. Um, in uh, verse 17 and the last one functions uh, a little more exegetically I would say um, in in bringing about the an explanation um, to, to the first so so that would be um this would be our third point here and so the unit it, it just breaks down perfectly this way there's just it's just you know it, it just it the the, the you know it, it, it divides up very simply Okay, so we'll come here to this slide here, um, looking diagrammatically here at verses um, 14 to 16 in uh, in in our in our text, and it begins here. Um, remember, here we have these this first initial uh, these two commands here for communal living, and so this is going to be offered here. And we'll divide this here. So we'll be looking here at the top portion here, um, and, and and this is going to this is going to involve the the two commands up here. Okay, uh, and then coming down here, it would be point would be the second point of of the paragraph here that we're looking at, and it gives us these um, these three uh, particular. Um, negative uh, purpose statements, purpose clauses here um, that we'll have our first one here and this one will be our second one here uh, that incorporates this part. Um, This is the first one here, this is our second and then our third one is down here. Okay, Um, so this is how this will divide into these into these three parts here. 
and uh, <clears throat> and so so we'll look at this. Okay, so it begins with this imperative pursue um, from Dioko. So it just so so it it tells us, and this is a second person plural uh, imperative. So this 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 is a directive to the whole community, not just to the leadership. So so everyone is to be looking out for. You know, we're all our brother's keepers here. Um, and so what are we supposed to be pursuing? So peace, okay, we're to be pursuing peace, first of all. And then it says, you know, meta pontone here, with all men or, or, or with all. Um, and, and so this obviously has a, a, a universal appeal. Uh, it, it would include that. But, but I think specifically we're talking about uh, church matters. So... So we're trying to keep peace with within the church, uh, within our community, and so this is what we're pursuing after, um, you know, in in a congregation wide setting that we're pursuing peace. Okay, so if you're going to pursue peace, then um, the 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 good way in which to vouchsafe that there is peace amongst us. Is that you're likewise also pursuing sanctification? So this is holiness, okay? So, so doing that which is which is right, because you know we have the command, you know, be holy because I am holy. Um, so we, you know, that this comes straight out of uh, Leviticus, you know, um, and and so the call here to holiness, um, and this would be uh, appropriating holiness. Um, through, uh, you know, through our uh, own efforts by means of the Holy Spirit, of course. But this is called personal growth with within sanctification. He's not really talking here about, you know, the holiness or the sanctification that comes uh, from being born again as being clothed with Christ's uh, sanctification and holiness. This is appropriating... Um, it's the process of appropriating holiness through, you know, choosing to live life uh, holy. Um, and so we're, we're, we're beginning here the process of, of beginning to look like God's sons and daughters, like we saw last time. So it's very important that, uh, that we, that we, you know, that, that, that we practice sanctification here um, because we've been given this wonderful wonderful salvation and we've been given you know the righteousness of Christ but so we now need to you know appropriate it for ourselves in the decisions that we make and then he there's this uh, this this comment here it says apart from which no one shall see the Lord so if you're truly born again, then, you know, you know, um, works will follow, which will, uh, you know, the, the, the fruit will prove the roots below. OK, you know, um, you know, we you know, we, we are uh, uh, now included within the body of Christ by our confession. And so as we grow and we and we appropriate personal holiness, um, and, and this is a practice and, and that we learn this is this is what we are learning to do okay and because you're not going to have peace within a congregation if everybody's a bunch of sinners so so the only way to get peace is by by is is by having people behaving appropriately okay so this is why we're to to pursue peace. Uh, and sanctification, because this pretty much this is how you maintain the peace is by doing that which is right. Because if everybody's sinning, then everyone's offending one another, um, and we're going to have a lot, a lot of trouble within the church. So uh, the the you know God's very serious about about um, growing in sanctification. Uh, and it even makes this statement here that, you know, hey, you know, because if you don't demonstrate any, you know, holiness, then, then you're not going to, I'm sorry, you're not going to heaven, okay? Um, so so this is something here, uh, you know, a, a statement here that uh, 
that isn't idle. It isn't a hollow threat. It's absolutely necessary. But, you know, I mean, if you're a Christian um, and, and you have the Holy Spirit living in you, then, you know, um, this is, you know, we, we grow in the grace of God and we cooperate with, with the Spirit of God in, in the process of becoming uh, like Him. Okay. Um, now, so so this is these this is the first two initial initial commands, and then we come here to um, episcop puntes here. This is this adverbial uh, participle here means, um, and, and and so by in, in the process of pursuing, you know, peace and holiness, um, we are to by means uh, 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 of looking over or overseeing uh, the the congregation, least there be one of these three instances, least there be a certain one who lacks the grace of God or comes up short from the grace of God. Okay, so here um, we, we have this... Um, this substantive here, uh, participle here, functioning here as is, you know, the, you know, overseeing what? What are we going to oversee here? A certain one who lacks um, the grace of God. So this is somebody who's falling short by means of their own fault, and this would mean ultimately this, you know, the greater context is going to show us here that we're dealing with, you know, if, if you're falling short of the grace of God, um, that means basically, you know, you know, in, in you know, for, for this particular context here, especially with Esau here, we're talking about apostasy. Um, uh, and, and, and also the second example here, at least there be a certain root of bitterness that crowds in by springing up okay and um so so this this is a this this here is come you know is a quotation or it's an allusion to a quotation out of you know deuteronomy 29 which is definitely talking about apostasy i mean that's the very context here um, uh, in Deuteronomy 29, that we we find this phrase here, a a certain root of bitterness, um, is talking about um, people who are are went back and are worshiping, attempting to worship the 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 idols and uh, gods of of ancient Canaan. Um, and then, thirdly, he he offers uh, least there be a fornicator or profane person as Esau. Um, then and then he there's this relative clause here who, um, for a meal, sold the rights of his own birthright. Um, so this explains this. So so these three examples here. Um, of uh, of uh, of the reason why the con there's a congregation wide calling here to to look over to oversee so everyone's to act in, in the form of a bishop so to speak because this is where we get the word bishop from episcopos here but um, so this is the verbal form here um, and 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 so we are to uh, and and it's present tense. So it's so we're to be diligently overseeing, looking over the congregation uh, of which we're all a part of, and least there be least there be these these three examples here, and and they're very clear. Uh, least there be one who uh, falls short of the grace of God. Least there be. A, a certain root of bitterness that crowds in by springing up uh, through which many are defiled and least there be a you know a certain fornicator or profane person as Esau um, and then and it explains it explains this through this um, 
expansive relative clause here, uh, who for a, a meal, right, uh, sold the rights of his own birthright. So, <clears throat> you know, this is talking about somebody who's willing to, to throw away the double blessing of the father uh, just just because, you know, he's famished and uh, and just for one meal, he would he would just flippantly throw away his own rights. So 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 this is you know there are people who will throw away, um, you know you can't lose your salvation, but you can throw it away here. Okay, um, you know it's not talking about salvation here as far as um, Esau here. You know Esau didn't wouldn't have lost salvation because he rejected the rights of his own birthright. He just would have made a very stupid mistake um, by, by you know, giving that up for something. But it's in the context here of, you know, we don't take our salvation lightly, you know, and this is, you know, th th this is the reason for this particular call here um, is that, uh, you know, there's a call to oversee and so this example of Esau you know that that he would flippantly just give away you know um, the, the rights his own birth rights we're never to you know take our salvation lightly for for any reason um, you know we need to take this very seriously what we're doing here okay um, and uh, but here, at least there be, you know, the, 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 the thing, the, you know, the, the, the two, uh, you know, nominative uh, nouns here, at least there be a fornicator or a profane person. Well, then that, you know, as Esau, well, then th this, this, is, this lets us know that, you know, we're talking about an apostate here because there no fornicator or profane person will ever enter the kingdom of God. Okay, you know, this is not talking about somebody who has shown, demonstrated the fruits of uh, repentance and, and the fruit of salvation. This is somebody who, who, um, who has rejected the, the, the faith and, um, you know, is, is definitely not a part of the community. Um, and, and, and Esau never was, uh, for that matter. Um, he, he, he was uh, he was he was a person that uh, uh, didn't really follow after God uh, with his heart um, and uh, he doesn't really have a good track record um, so anyhow so th this is here for so so why was he brought up he was brought up so that you know we don't want you know is talking about you know um, a, a, a negative example that we don't want anyone to follow into some some uh, example of, of of Esau, you know, who who would you know sell their salvation for you know for for, for a you know lightly for a meal or something like that. There's no reason for you know for people then uh, to uh, fall away from their faith here. And throw throw everything away, um, and, and so this is you know this this began here in in the first example of somebody coming up short uh, of the grace of God. So that's definitely you know this is talking about the community. Um, so so you got to remember the um, when you're coming here to the book of Hebrews, you, you know Hebrews is really not a book that you're going to find you know Calvinistic theology or you know um, any type of theology that's going to support one saved always saved type doctrines this is definitely not a book um, that you are going to find anything like that in okay um, Hebrews is, is just is just the opposite of that so you know if you can read the book of Hebrews and you can come out from it, you know, thinking that it's teaching once saved, always saved. I think you need to read the book again.
Okay, now coming here to this slide, um, it's important at least here, I don't know how much time we're going to spend here, but um, it, it's important to see that embedded within um, you know, our unit are allusions to previous scriptures. Um, and you can see here that we'll we'll look at this this particular um, we'll look down here at verse fifteen at, at this uh, die stick here um, and in the Septuagint it, it reads um, uh, it, you know leave off from evil and do good seek peace and pursue it. So that pretty much, you know, basically, I think, you know, most scholars think that, you know, this, this here uh, stems here from from Psalm uh, 35 here, uh, and, and that yet you're going to find here in the um, in the Masoretic text up here, um, and in the Septuagint down here as well, um, and we'll see that he, we'll see this here um, that you know seek peace and pursue it okay uh shalom viradefehu so so here we have you know seek peace and pursue it so this is where um our author basically was fishing uh or or where he was you know where where he got this phrase from here pursue peace you know and sanctification so he probably most likely got it here from from this particular psalm, uh, seek peace and pursue it here. So this is the phrase that that you know most scholars are going to to chime in here and, and state that this is where this allusion is derivative from, uh, as well as when we come down here to this certain root of bitterness here that comes up here in Deuteronomy twenty nine. Um, and we can see that here, coming down here, least there be a certain root among you growing up, all right, bearing, you know, po poison and bitterness. Um, and, and you can even see that May Tis here is even coming and you got metis here as well so this metis that that you know that comes in our passage that's that's repeated three times is most likely being influenced here from from this particular text um so i just wanted to show you this i i mean we could get into this a little, you know further but i you know i just you just need to know that that, that where where our author's been fishing and where he's you know, deriving, you know, his text from and his thoughts are coming here um, in, in, in this one from Deuteronomy. This is chapter 29 here, beginning at 15 here. That that would be the context. Um, and, and you could do some of your, your own research um, going on from here. Okay, now coming here to our last slide here. Um, you know, this comes down to point three, where we have our, our final two basis clauses, um, and it begins here with the first one: "For you know," and then we have this 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 haughty clause, which um, you know it 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 introduces indirect speech or indirect content here, and this is content, um, you know, um, uh, as Dana Hare says, is is, is well known here. Um, because it stems here from the, you know, from the Genesis record here of chapters 25 to 27, you know, are, are the units here about Esau. Um, and so, so it states here that, that, um, so, so for you know, so what is it that they know? Um, that he was even afterwards rejected. And then we have this, uh, this adverbial participle that's temporal when desiring to inherit the blessing okay so when he was desiring and you know to inherit so to inherit here this would be a complementary infinitive that that's you know basically filling out um you know the, uh, the further meaning here from you know from this adverbial participle here uh, thelon this 
this is an aorist participle here. So anyhow, so it's just you know, uh, so when he when he was trying to inherit the blessing here, um, you know, we we knew that he was rejected. Um, so that's because because this is what the text states. And then you know, exegetically, there's a, there's a second one uh, uh, basis clause for he did not find a place of repentance. And then we have this uh, you know this concessive clause here. Although having sought it out with even though he sought it out with tears, so so Esau tried to. You know, try, tried to get the, the the blessing, and he cried and wept and cried and wept, and 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 uh, he was ultimately rejected, um, and uh, and and so no amount of tears could could bring it back, uh, and 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 this is here. This is an example here um, of you know um, of somebody not finding a place of repentance that would take you back to Hebrews you know this this goes back to Hebrews 6 okay talking about you know there's an impossibility of renewing certain people to repentance okay um, and so this would underline that theme and uh, uh, that you get there in, in Hebrews 6 uh, so definitely this passage here you know this you know this is the reason why we're to pursue peace and holiness um, because if you don't have holiness, you're not going to see God. And then, you know, and, and so, you know, if you have no personal holiness, you know, you're, 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 you're not going to heaven. Okay. Uh, you have not demonstrated, you know, any fruit of, uh, uh, of, of repentance and any fruit that, you know, that, that, that you are, you know, are truly, you know, born again here. Um, so you have to. There has to be some type of demonstration here, of after having been saved, you know, we're we're saved, you know, by grace, for good works, you know. So, so, so this is why we're to overlook, you know, the congregation concerning these, you know, the, the you know, it said may, tis, three times, right? At least there be someone who falls up short of the grace of God. At least there be a certain root of bitterness, or three. At least there be a you know a fornicator or profane person like Esau, okay. Um, and so these explanations here are the reasons why we need to oversee. Least there be these you know th these three types of examples within the church, and and they are they're they're in every church, and so this is the reason why. You know, in the process of pursuing peace and pursuing holiness uh, within the congregation, that we, you know, we're, you know, we by by means of overseeing the the congregation. This is how we're we're overseeing the congregation, or pursuing peace is by overseeing the congregation here, um, and, and 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 scoping out, you know, at least there there be these three things here. Uh, these three types of uh, of situations uh, within within the church that would defile it and and defile many others. Um, so we just have to, you know, um, you know, you know, by pursuing peace, um, the best way to secure peace is by living holy. Okay, because by living an unholy life, you're going to be creating, you know you know a lot of trouble for a lot of people because your your sins are going to offend uh, other people eventually and it's going to then defile many and so this is the reason for uh, this paranesis that our author has enjoined upon us today okay well um, this has been a rather short session which is good um, we typically have a lot longer ones, but this has been Biblical Theology, Exegesis, and Hermeneutics, where meaning is always context-driven. Please like, share, and subscribe, um, and uh, make some comments, and hopefully we'll see you back here next time.